Hi there, welcome back to another Commander Deck Tech, where I give you a personalised tour of one of my EDH decks. If you're new here, then hiya, I'm Soph. I'm a secret nerd who loves video games, Magic the Gathering, and lots of cups of tea. Sometimes all at the same time. <laughs> I've popped the deck list in the description so you can have a closer look and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. So let's get on with it. So today we're looking at my Rin and Seri cat dog deck. I used this in the last Commander gameplay video which I posted last week and it's safe to say this deck did not <laughs> live its life to the fullest in that one. I'll pop the gameplay video at the top so you can go and watch that first if you like. Looking at this commander, Rin and Seri Inseparable is a one red, green, white costing legendary dog cat creature. It's a 4 4 that reads Whenever you cast a dog spell, create a 1 1 green cat creature token. And whenever you cast a cat spell, create a 1 1 white dog creature token. You can also pay a red, green, and white to tap it for Rin and Seri to deal damage to any target, so that's players, creatures, whatever, equal to the number of dogs you control. You gain life equal to the number of cats you control. So this deck is a bit more on the casual side. It's not one of my go-to decks if I want to ruin someone's day, <laughs> but I find it's nice to have decks where you can lean back and chill and play a happy game of Commander. Uh, one of the things that I had in mind when I was building this deck was to try and cram as many cats and dogs in there as possible to trigger um, Rin and Seri's ability. So you'll find a lot of the removal and protection spells are abilities or enter the battlefield triggers on cat and dog, cat and dog creatures. Um, that was to make sure that I can build this gigantic, adorable and fluffy army. Um, also, when Rin and Seri was released, Wizards actually changed the creature type Hound to mean Dog 2. So that means there's more options for building the deck, which is really awesome for them to do. Ever since I started playing Magic a few years ago, I always wanted to build a Doggo themed deck, but my boyfriend always warned me I would struggle because there weren't many dogs anyway, and the ones that were available Let's just say they weren't the best. <laughs> they were cute though. But once I saw Rin and Seri, I just knew that it was my chance to make a dog cat deck. After brutally being defeated by Sai and his cruel artifacts, I took a deep dive into this deck to see if anything could be improved. And I'm quite embarrassed to admit this, but there were only a couple of ways to draw cards in that deck, which definitely needed fixing. The ways that I was drawing cards was with Skull Clamp, Guardian Project, and Arms Collector, which is a cat as well, which is a bonus. So what we did is we added Azor's Gateway, which is cheap to play and it transforms, I'll let you see it, into this crazy ass land. Yeah, it transforms into this crazy ass land that gives you X mana of any one colour, where X is your life total. Um, bearing in mind you gain life with Cat Dog's ability, so that's really good to put in there. You can't go wrong with a Harmonise, and I also added Once Upon a Time, because it's free if you're lucky enough to have it in your starting hand. Plus, if you know me, uh, then you know this gal appreciates an Eldrain card. <laughs> Oof, that art is so magical. It's so nice. I'd love a playmat or a poster with this. Mm -mm. So the squirrel star of the show is Toski, Toski, Bearer of Secrets, which is a new Kaldheim card. And let's just take a moment to appreciate the showcase art for this set. Mm -mm. It's sweet as a nut. And finally, for card draw, I've added a Vanquisher's Banner, um, which should have been in the deck from the start, but it was in another deck that we've just taken apart, so now it gets to go in Cat Dog, which is nice. Just a side note, uh, whenever a card says choose a creature type, I always pick cats, because I have more cat 
cards than dog cards in the deck. Um, and it's a hell of a lot easier if you just choose the same creature type so you don't have to keep track of everything. Another thing we did take out is three cost in ramp such as Cultivate and Kadama's Reach and we exchanged it for two cost in ramp like three visits and Ariscus. I've said that right oh my gosh Ariscus Explorer. There was already a rampant growth, fertile ground and a far seek in there. Oh, look at that. Mm, mm, mm. And these two costume ramps are really good for speeding things up, which is one of the reasons we put them in there. Um, we've got some absolute staple artifacts here, including Felwar Stone, Selesnia Signet, and Arcane Signet. Um, this is going to sound really weird, but for those of you who've played Diablo 3, Every time I play or someone else plays an arcane signet, I hear, I need more arcane power in my head. So random, I know. <laughs> Finally, a bit of a different one compared to the other ramp. Earthcraft is so freaking good in this deck because you can end up with lots of tokens and you don't always want to attack because you need them for Rin and Seri's ability. So you can tap these tokens to untap basic lands um, to help cast even more spells in one turn. So it really speeds the deck up. So with this deck, it's extremely, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is that the commander survives because it relies so heavily on Catdog to win. So there's lots of cards to protect Rin and Seri. Um, Swiftfoot Boots is always good to have so I can give cat dog haste as well. And then resolute watchdog and selfless savior camera. Thank you. Um, look how cute selfless savior is. He's so adorable. Oh my God. Um, these are really great ways to save creatures um, and they're low cost in. So it's basically paying one to save maybe my commander, maybe something else, to make a cat token as well. Um, another way to save things from going to the graveyard is with Fleetfoot Panther and Timur, is it Timur? Timur, I don't know, Sabretooth, which brings another creature back to my hand. So if someone targets my commander, I can bring it back to my hand and then cast it again without having to pay the extra two. A really effective card for this deck is Steely Resolve, which will protect all my cats as well as Rin and Seri. Um, I did play it in the last gameplay video, although it didn't do much then, I can assure you that this card is a solid addition to the deck. So if I need to protect my whole board, say if someone goes to board wipe, then do not fear, Heroic Intervention is here, <laughs> which has saved my butt so many times. As well as having plenty of Kato's and Doggo's, you can really reap Rin and Seri's rewards when you play Changelings because they count as both cat and a dog creature. So you get both tokens from Rin and Seri. Changeling spells are quite low cost in as well. So you can go off more and cast more than one in a turn. The following are pretty basic, but they do the job well. So we have Avian Changeling, Woodland Changeling, Universal Automaton and Irregular Cohort, which also makes um, another token as well, which is good for things like Earthcraft and stuff. Moving on to the more exciting changelings, let's talk about Realmwalker. Oh, look at that sweet extended art. Oh, mm, mm. This is another new card from Kaldheim, which I knew I had to have for this deck when it was previewed. I was like screaming about it on Twitter, like, oh my God, get in my cat dog deck. Um, it's always an advantage when you know what you're drawing into as well. Plus you can cast spells from the top of your library, which leaves more cards in your hand for future turns. One of my favorite cards when I first started playing Commander was Managoga Hydra, which got a plus one plus one counter whenever a player casts a spell. And I love how humongous, absolutely massive it would get. Super chunky. A similar card to that in this deck is Torium Mauler, 
which gets plus one plus one whenever an opponent casts a spell. So not quite as powerful as Mana Gorga Hydra, but still can get pretty scary, especially in multiplayer. One of the main ways to win with this deck is actually with this changeling card. I know, right? You'd never think it. Mirror Entity is a two and a white costing 1-1 one, one changeling. And it has the ability where you can pay X and until end of turn, creatures you control have base power and toughness X, X and gain all creature types. So as well as being able to buff my kitty and puppy army, it makes it so all creatures are cats and dogs. So I'm able to swing at my opponent's face with Rin and Siri, their ability, and I'm dealing loads of damage and then gaining that much life as well. And I can do that each turn. It's not just a one-off effect. Also, the art of this card <laughs> reminds me of the alien mission on GTA 5. If anyone knows what that means, hit me up in the comments so I don't feel like I'm going crazy. <laughs> Another card that makes all my creatures cats and dogs is Shields of the Velis Vel. It's a bit of a tongue twister that. I've won with this one a few times as well. It's a bit of a dark horse, so don't underestimate these changeling spells. Blades of the Velisvel does a similar thing too. Notice how these tribal instants are changelings as well. So they make me a cat and a dog token whenever I cast them. The other changeling instant spell is Crib Swap, which is a great removal card. I love the art of this. <laughs> Look at him, he's just like so snug as a bug in bed. And it just reminds me of my face when I'm all tucked up in bed and my boyfriend brings me a cup of tea and I'm like, yeah, this is the life. Now it's time to look at how to buff my cat dog army with anthem effects and make even more tokens. Yes, I said even more because you can ha never have enough cats and dogs, which is true for magic and also in real life. No one can deny that. <laughs> to start with, uh, we're gonna go with the obvious. Um, you're gonna want adaptive automaton and metallic mimic in the deck, which will give all cats plus one plus one if you choose cats. Kahira the orphan guard, does a similar thing, but also gives them Vigilance, which is huge for this deck because then you can start attacking without worrying about what your opponents are gonna do on their combat steps. Then this is a really cool Ikoria card for sure. Regal Caracal, Leonin War Leader, and Pride Sovereign all make me cat tokens with lifelink, which you're gonna love some lifelink, can't go wrong with it. <laughs> Pride Sovereign can get a bit chunky as well. Um, if you're not careful and it's like me after eating all the chocolates at Christmas, <laughs> not just a lord, but a king as well. King of the Pride gives other cats I control plus two, plus one, which is nice. An interesting card is Hungry Lynx because it gives one of your opponents a 1-1 one, one rat with death touch at the beginning of your end step. But whenever a rat dies, you put a plus one plus one counter on each cat you control. Yeah, each cat. It's kind of like the hunted cycle of cards or even Daryl or Clackbridge Troll, which I think are awesome because they bring politics into the game, but in a fun way. <laughs> I never thought I'd be using the words politics and fun together. <laughs> because we don't want all the cute doggos to be left out, Pack Leader is an awesome anthem card that prevents combat damage to dogs when it attacks. The flavor text on this actually melts my Ice Queen heart. It says, he will be your loyal champion and his pack, your protectors. All he asks is a full belly, a spot by the fire and all the love in your heart. Oh, see, this dude has his priorities straight. A really great enchantment for this deck is Felidar Retreat because it is so versatile in the deck because if you have nothing to play and you just have lands in your hand, then it still gives you something to do each turn, whether it's making a cat token or making all my creatures bigger and giving them vigilance. 
Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. Well, this is all well and good, Sophie, but how the heck are you gonna win this? Well, don't worry, folks, because shit hits the fan for your opponents when I play Perforo's God of the Forge. The indestructible enchantment creature god who reads whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Perforos deals two damage to each opponent. These changelings are starting to look a bit scarier now, aren't they? <laughs> Once Perforos is out, cards like Doubling Season and Anointed Procession only make matters worse for your opponents by making twice as many tokens and that's going to bring the amount of damage Rin and Seri deals way up. Plus if you have Perforos out that's double the damage there. It's very fun indeed. <laughs> but what you're really going to do is play Maskwood Nexus. Once you have this bad boy artifact on the battlefield it's going to basically make all of your creatures cats and dogs. And if you have any spare mana, you can pay three and make a shapeshifter with changeling. So you're going to be dealing a lot of damage with your cute cat dog army you've created throughout the game just by playing low costing creature spells. Although Rin and Seri can act as removal by dealing damage to creatures or planeswalkers, it's still really important to have other ways to get rid of those meanie creatures. So I have staples like Path to Exile, Beast Within, which is awesome because it reads permanent, and Kabira Takedown. There's no harm in adding these modal dual face cards because if you don't need the spell or you need the land drop more, then you can just play it as a land, but at least you have it in there in the deck if you need it. Plus, it works with Planeswalkers as well, which is a massive bonus for any removal card. So the following cards get rid of artifacts and enchantments. We've got Anox Survivalist, Mast Vandal, ooh, another Kaltheim card. Look at that shininess, mm, very nice. Feline Sovereign, which also buffs your cats. Kazali Slingers and Aura Shards. I'm just gonna put it out there Aura Shards is fucking sick in general, yeah? So in this deck, it's absolutely insane. It's a real threat to any opponent's game plan and great for going against those pesky pillow fort decks that run enchantments like Ghostly Prison or Propaganda, which can get in the way of this deck depending on how much attacking you're gonna do. Even so, if you have the commander out, play a one costing cats or a dog. Aura shards can destroy a Ristic study and a smothering type, which is just ridiculous. It's a right bargain. <laughs> There's a few random but still good cards in the deck. Um, Nakatl, I hope I said that right, Nakatl War Pride, which is kind of pricey to play. It costs six. Um, compared to everything else, but it can board wipe a player when it attacks. Prowling Sil... <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know if my brain just can't comprehend the second word. Super bird. Anyway, is the middle finger to everyone running blue at the table, and it feels so good that I don't need no counter spell slowing me down. Thank you very much. Wild Castle is cheap and cheerful. It's just one mana and can become a 3-3 three, three pretty easily. Sometimes when you don't have much to do, you'll thank me for running Fleece Main Lion. There have been games where I've run out of cards, shock, <laughs> and I'll pay five to make Fleece Main Lion monstrous. And then you can start hitting your opponents with a 4-4 indestructible hexproof lion and not have to worry about what's going to happen to it. You can't really go too long, too long? You can't really go too wrong with landfall triggers, which is why Territorial Scythe Cat and Akum Hellhound feature in the deck. Look at those nice art. Mm. 
Nice. The Hellhound only costs one as well, so it's a kind of a buy one get one free feel when you pay it with Rin and Seri out. When you need an answer, Ella Damry's call can help. This is the only tutor spell in the deck. Uh, I played it on the Commander gameplay video and searched for a Kazali Slingers because I was against an artifact deck, it seemed like the best thing to do. Um, it depends what you need at the time, but it's nice that the card goes straight into your hand rather on the top of your deck so no opponents can screw you over by making you shuffle your deck or some other not cool move, bro. So when it comes to lands, there's not loads to say. However, um, I do have a proxy, if you can't tell. <laughs> Like I need to say, Gaia's Cradle in here. I honestly don't care about people using proxies in Magic. Um, magic is about having fun, not how much money you have in my opinion. And the Gaia's Cradle is amazing for this deck, so fuck it, why not have one? <laughs> Gavany Township, similar to Fleece Main Lion. It gives you something to sink your mana into if you have nothing else to do. Absolute Commander Staples, we've got Command Tower. Exotic Orchard and Evolving Wilds. And then Path of Ancestry is good for any tribal deck. And same for Unclaimed Territory as they're just both good for mana fixing. When it comes to dual lands and basics, I'll go through them quickly. If you wanna know more, then you can check out the deck list in the description. If you have any recommendations for the deck, I would absolutely love to hear them. So hit me up in the comments below or on Twitter. I absolutely love reading the comments and discovering new cards people recommend. It's one of the best things in magic for me and it makes me so happy. Thanks again for watching the video and hanging out with me for another EDH deck tech. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel so I know what works and I can make even more content for you. If you want even more content, then you can check out my Twitter and Instagram for more goofs and gaffs, which is in the description below. But that's all for now. I hope you have an awesome week and I'll see you next time. Bye!